In this video, I want to show you a graphical user interface that I developed during my PhD. This is one of the graphical user interfaces that I have developed. So I will not delve into all the details related to this GUI because there are too many details, but let's see what uh, we can do with this GUI. So I can run the GUI and then I can um, load a signal and I will choose one of these signals that I have used also in my PhD dissertation. Let's choose this one. And then the GUI asks me some questions that I don't want to explain in detail, at least not all of them. So I will choose no. And in this case, I, okay, I'm asked if I want to do a preliminary analysis of the signal. In this case, I might click yes, because I want to show you both the PSD and also the time series, so the reference signal. Let's see. So this is the signal that I have here on the left. It's a, a signal with the following PSD. The PSD is plotted between 0 and 50 Hz, and the signal was sampled at 100 Hz. You can see from the shape of the signal that the signal is not Gaussian, because it is quite heterogeneous in the sense that it contains these kind of peaks, localized peaks that uh, make the signal not Gaussian. So the distribution of the signal is called leptokurtic because it has a kurtosis greater than three, but let's do not uh, get into that now. So I don't want to be too technical. Anyway, so from this signal, we will uh, calculate uh, the, the FDS. So by means of uh, standard uh, counting methods, the FDS of this signal will be calculated. And then from the FDS, we will synthesize a power spectral density. So in this case, I don't want to filter the signal. I don't want to change the frequency resolution. The frequency resolution is related to the, the resolution of the PSD and also the FDS. I will click no. And I don't want to modify either the duration of the signal that will be synthesized. In particular, the duration of the signal will be 600 seconds. It will be the same as the um, duration of the reference signal, which is 10 minutes, more or less. I will click no, and here I will enter the lower frequency and the upper frequency of uh, the spectrum. So I will go from, for example, from 5 to 50 hertz, the spectrum of the FTS. I will click OK, and then here I also have to insert uh, a number of hours related to the expected life of the component under test. In particular, um, this means that, for example, since the signal here lasts for 600 seconds, it means that the signal will be repeated until we reach uh, a certain number of hours. For example, I can set uh, the number of hours to, I don't know, five, five hours. So the damage will be calculated based upon this duration here. So if we click OK, then the GUI makes its computations and uh, it asks me if I want to load another signal, but I will click No. And here I have some results. So for example, here on the left, I have the following results for the power spectral density. So the power spectral density in blue is the power spectral density of the signal, of the reference signal that I showed you here. And the one in cyan is the PSD synthesized according to the fatigue damage spectrum. So this is a theoretical PSD which will be associated to a Gaussian signal. And the cyan PSD is related to the FDS curves. So here we have the two FDS curves. You can see that they are almost coincident. So it means that uh, they are the same curve after all. The one in blue is the fatigue damage spectrum calculated by means of time counting techniques from the reference signal here, which is non-Gaussian, as I said. Whereas the one in cyan was estimated by means of the mathematical formulas related to the theory of fatigue damage. And from the FDS, you can also plot this uh, PSD in cyan. So you might wonder, why are these two PSDs different? Well, they are different because the blue one is associated to a non-Gaussian signal, whereas the cyan one is associated to a Gaussian signal. And uh, it also depends on the duration that we impose. In general, a Gaussian signal must have a, a greater PSD in order to create the same damage as a non-Gaussian signal. This is not the truth in all cases. 
because it might depend on other factors, but I don't want to discuss those factors. But in general, this is actually the case because a Gaussian signal needs to be a little bit larger because a Gaussian signal needs to have a greater power spectral density than the um, non-Gaussian signal. And if you integrate the power spectral density, you get the total energy, which is the variance. So the variance for a Gaussian signal might be greater than the variance of a non-Gaussian signal. The Gaussian signal will have higher order statistics because it contains these peaks and bursts that you saw earlier. So let me plot the reference signal one more time. And due to the presence of these peaks and bursts, the higher order moments will be greater. And I can also generate the Gaussian signal here with this UI. If I click on generate time series, okay, here I have some statistical parameters, but I don't want to discuss these statistical parameters. Now, you can see that there is another power spectra density here, which is the one in red. And the one in red was calculated from the signal, the Gaussian signal that we generated. And I can show you the Gaussian signal here. So uh, this is in particular a realization of 100 seconds of the Gaussian signal. I can enlarge it if you want. You, you can see that this is much more homogeneous than the signal that I have here. Much more, uh, let's say, uniform. You don't see all these uh, peaks these very large peaks that you have that you have in a non-Gaussian signal. And in general, the standard deviation of this signal will be greater. So you can see that if we consider the standard deviation, so more or less, if we enlarge this, you can see that this signal will oscillate for uh, a greater amount of time between uh, minus uh, 0.05 to 0.5 uh, meters per second squared. So this is an acceleration. Whereas sometimes, very rarely and unfrequently, you might see these very high bursts or peaks that exceed those values. Whereas for uh, the Gaussian signal, you see that these oscillations are contained between minus uh, 0 0.8 to 0 0.8. So in general, for a greater amount of time, this signal will oscillate in a larger range with respect to the reference signal. But the reference signal has these uh, sudden peaks and bursts that uh, can exceed those values. So this is just the intuition. Don't think about it too much. I just want to give you the rough ideas behind this. So now I don't want to save the signal. And I can also calculate with the time counting methods the FDS from uh, this uh, time signal. So I can click on this button here and I can click OK to calculate the FDS. You can see that we have another curve here in red, which more or less is the same as uh, the other ones. So we have to be careful because the um, Y axis here as a logarithmic scale. So even minor differences can be actually quite large. But on the average, you can see that for most frequencies, uh, the FDS curves are very close to each other, which means that we can attribute more or less the same damage potential to our signals. Now, the legend here doesn't look accurate because, uh, I mean, the FDS from the time series, and by the time series here, I mean the signal that I have synthesized should be red, but uh, never mind. So the red, the red FDS is the one associated to the Gaussian signal. So we have calculated that thanks to the time domain algorithms. Whereas the one in Cyan should be actually the same. They should be coincident, but this is just theoretical. This was just calculated thanks to the formulas related to the theory of fatigue damage. And also this uh, power spectral density here, the one in Cyan is just theoretical. Then from the Cyan one, you create a signal from the PSD, you can always create a signal. So you generate the phases of the signal randomly and the power spectral density will determine uniquely the amplitudes of the signal. That is very simple. It's a very simple algorithm. And then from that, you can easily create all the sinusoids to construct your signal. And at the end of the day, you have a real signal, which is the Gaussian one. So you obtain this signal. And from this signal, you can calculate again the power spectral density by means of the algorithms, the very standard algorithms that uh, we have in the literature. And you can also calculate the fatigue damage spectrum. 
you can see that there are some uh, differences in, because uh, the theory has uh, several assumptions and it might not be perfect in general, especially for uh, such a complicated theory as the one related to fatigue damage. But I managed to use this theory and uh, I managed to obtain very interesting and useful results. I also managed to improve the theory because uh, I also mentioned uh, in previous videos that we can also generate non-Gaussian signals. So not just Gaussian signals, but also non-Gaussian signals in order to try to increase the reliability of the tests. But I don't want to delve into that, as I said. So in this case, I've also chosen some parameters related to the high cycle fatigue damage uh, curve. So this B here, was chosen to be seven. And uh, this parameter can be actually different from that. And uh, then I've also chosen this parameter K, which relates stresses to relative displacements. I also have this parameter C. And then I also have the damping ratio of our single degree of freedom system. And I also have the frequency resolution here of uh, the fatigue damage and also the power spectral density. And I have other possibilities here that I cannot describe in just one video. For example, I can also plot the response of the system, of a single degree of freedom system, with a certain damping ratio. For example, I can choose 1%. I can choose the natural frequency of the SDOF system to be 15 Hertz. And this is uh, what I get. So on the left here, I get the response of the system to the reference signal that we saw earlier, the one in blue. And we also get the response to the Gaussian signal. And you can do that for uh, several uh, different uh, parameters. So you can choose other types of parameters. You can choose 1% and uh, 7 Hertz and so on and so forth. This is uh, what you get. You can vary these parameters. And uh, I also plotted uh, here, the kurtosis value, which is related to the statistical moment of order four, normalized with respect to the standard deviation. And this parameter is representative of uh, the deviation from Gaussianity. So the kurtosis of the response to the reference signal in this case is 4.2. And for a Gaussian signal, we have a value of three. So you can see that uh, the kurtosis of the response to the synthesized signal, which is Gaussian, is 2.9. So this is actually a simulation, so it will not be exactly three, but you can see that actually the response to the synthesized signal, which is Gaussian, is also Gaussian, which is something uh, intuitive. And this is where I want to stop now.